So guys, hello. We are going inside this museum, Belgian museum since 1880 until now, Musée Ostende. Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel and today we are here in Ostende in one of their famous museum in the Musée. It's a modern museum where lots of artists are from Belgium, so I hope you'll enjoy this vlog. Bye! Stand. He is not a man of grand theories, rather of intelligent allusions. His art is an invitation to reflect and to rest. The many series of self-portraits that he photographs have a layered content. The titles are also not unimportant. They overlap, reflect, jump over from one language to another, are placed in italics and then back to Roman again. He plays with images and words and brings the two together to form a new language. In L'Histoire, La Guerre, we see an almost empty stage, with, to the right, a shell atop a pillar, to the left, a curtain, and behind it, a mirror set upon an easel. The unifying theme of these self-portraits is the relationship of the man as the artist to the woman as the model. It gradually becomes clear that the artist does not copy his model, but makes her himself, that a naked woman is never herself, and that the artist conceals and loses himself in amongst his disguises and self-made portraits. So that artist is no other than Jan Ver Goes. Mass media, a 
advertising, comics, dictionaries, signs prohibiting things, and everyday life. We see a banana, a drum, ghosts, flying saucers, or a cigarette advert. He also adds words, letters, or fragments of text in different languages. He switches them around, weighs them up, plays with them. The banality of the images, together with the significance of the word, recalls the humor in René Magritte's or Marcel Brodha's work. Yet he does not like messages. For Swenen, a good painting is an object, a thing. He combines popular images, letters and words with abstract elements, such as spots, smudges and lines. He wants to explore every nook and cranny of the painterly world. Form, paint, texture, colour, motif. Sometimes he paints with wild and raw gestures, with impetuous splashes. At other times he is more detailed and structured. He loves searching for the tension between image and paint. might look innocent, but this is never actually the case. His works in clay are full of nods, echoes, and ambiguous references to antiquity, the Gothic, the Baroque, or Romanticism, to opera, literature, or poetry, but also to contemporary and socially charged subjects like that? such as racism, power relations, or sexuality. This female torso is entitled The Trojan Horse. It is invented to raise a sharp black rose petals. According to the Greek myth, the Trojan horse was such a red. White plastic balls and nylon wires protrude from a black circular wooden disc. They move incredibly slowly and irregularly, sometimes with a jolt. It stimulates our curiosity. No. Really there is an electric lever. Or was it just a trick of the eye? See? Why does it move so slowly? The bundles of nylon are reminiscent of swaying seagrass, sea anemones, or hundreds of insect feelers. The title is utterly simple. 1,373 white dots. Purely factual, without any reference to what the work might represent. The contrast between the artwork's matter-of-fact title They're and its moving. beguiling appearance How can they makes are this moving? a playful and surprising object. Paul Bury regularly okay. experimented with the theme of white-tipped nylon it's wires so that are set in motion by an electric motor. He added small moving parts to his moving. work as counterpoints to the otherwise heavy and basic elements. The slow and irregular movements have a huge impact on the viewer's experience of time. The attention is drawn and held. The passage of time is stretched. Did you know that there is an artwork on the moon? It's a small, eight and a half centimeter high aluminium sculpture okay, there's an artwork. artist, Paul van Hoydon. Paul van Hoydonk took it with him in the Apollo 15 in August 1971. It's now been on the moon for more than 50 years. Beside a memorial plaque with the names of all the astronauts and cosmonauts who had died by that time. It is the first and to date only art object on the moon. In this glass cabinet, you can see a replica. The sculpture had to be light and strong and capable of withstanding the extreme temperature differences on the moon. It depicts the universal human and therefore had to be sexless and show no traces of any particular ethnic group. The name of the artist was not made public at the time because David Scott opposed the commercialization of space. Jeff Verheyen went in search of the essence of nature and the universal relationship between people and their surroundings. He strove for an absolute total experience of light and color as a timeless and immaterial experience. Light, color and movement formed the basis for all his experiments. His iridescence technique, for example, is based on the merging of eight drops of light beams. To enhance the harmony, he also used geometrical principles, often based on the golden mean. His with subtle color gradations are composed of several layers of translucent glazes. Thanks to an exceptionally wide brush, he was able to create a smooth 
also wrote his manifesto, Essentialism. Two years later, he founded the New Flemish School as a reaction against lyrical abstraction in Belgian art. He was also drawn to the Zero Movement in Germany. circumvented or distorted in the official history. She wants to break these stereotypes and resist forgetting. She reconstructs the archives and histories and passes on this knowledge through her drawings and paintings. She 